Now don't worry, it's not a bum, it's still Lex. And this man's going to help me debummify. Well, that sounds wrong. No, we're not, <laughs> not going to help you do that. Moving on. Okay. So yes, we're back in the UK. It's cold, it's wet, it's grimy. But here, I'm going to get neatened up, trimmed up. And then we're going to go hit the gym session. Because I want to go in and I'm going to try deadlifting. And the point is, I want to go in with someone and try deadlifting. There's a new gym here that I want to start using. I'll show you guys at a later date properly. But the main point is, I'm going to show you how shit I am at deadlifting. I reckon Harris can out deadlift me, and he doesn't ever deadlift. I, I, I don't ever deadlift. Exactly. But I haven't done it properly. You haven't done it properly. I want people to show how shit I am at this. I reckon. Before you, you all start out laughing, I've not trained myself properly for about about six months. I've yeah. not had a good, good, solid week in the gym for about six months. There you go. Double, double the reason to be so getting in there. I'm liking the new hair. That's pretty sick. It's getting there. That beard's coming on. I thought I just had it trimmed. Well, stop asking me to grow my beard back. Okay. Look, Harry says beard. Beard by courtesy beard, right there. So that's your step in beard. If you ever want some beard stuff, let me know. I'll come film Harris. It's not coming back. Stop asking. Stop putting it on the post. I can't bring the beard back. Yet. No, I can't. Yet. I can't bring it back because then I can't work. Unless I, I work for a beard company. I don't work for a beard company. So well, I'm sorry. You can work for style. Let it go. Sell the beard products. <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting this. Sorted off. You remember what we did last time is we came in and we cut the, the parting in a little bit deeper. When you get your hair cut, if your parting's like here, get it cut a centimetre in from that parting and that'll make the hair impossible to fall that way and it'll all just... Look, there's nothing in this and it's, see it's all falling that way. Whereas before it used to be like flopping over here, there was that little bit that... Fuck. Anyway, so there you go, that's a little secret. Crack on? Crack on, crack on. Yeah, so. We're alive, feeling better about life in general. Feeling like a bum, sat on the sofa. Check yourself. You feel a bit rough, you feel a bit shitty? Go get a haircut, you'll feel better. Plus, you'll talk to 3D human beings in the outside world. It's amazing. So we're done at the styles, thanks to this man, Harris. Help me out. Ready for gym, mate. So the Viking hair's coming back, the beard isn't. Leave it be. That's your beard porn for the day. Right, let's go train. Oosh! Nice. So basically we've come upstairs and warmed up. Literally all we've done so far is just start getting the techniques for our heads. Neither of us have deadlifted properly for ever. Forever, I'm gonna be honest. I've never stuck to deadlifting for more than like two or three months at a time. Which is not enough to become progressive, it's not enough to become better at doing it, and it's not enough to create that natural mechanism for lifting. We're both having to think of everything we do. There's five things we need to think about before we even lift that bar. Not putting the hips too low to start with, so starting at a natural hip height. What that's going to do is save you from popping your hips early. If you pop your hips early, that's when you start getting hinging on the lower back, rather than it being driven through the legs, quads, glutes, and then the back coming in at the top. Then we're thinking about rolling the elbows in and tensing the back. Then we're breathing in deep, Holding that, holding that breath in our stomach like someone's gonna punch us. So that's helping neutralize the spine. Then five, we're looking to drive through the heels and then pop the hips through as soon as possible. So they're all the things you have to think about before you even start moving these bars properly. And you do that by starting light and building that mechanism, building that pathway properly so you get used to the way it feels. But there's nothing better than having someone else to train with to help spot when you be in shit. So I'm gonna go downstairs and do what I feel I can do that's heavy today, so I'm gonna be progressive, but it's, I just want you to see how shit my starting point really is gonna be. If you see shit going wrong, tell me. It's appreciative. Anything that is positively critical, fire away. This is gonna be a big learning curve, and when the new series starts, when we start a new series, this is gonna be programmed, this is gonna be consistent, and we're gonna look for real progression. So for you guys that have always been interested in doing something, or you've been doing this deadlifting, squatting, and benching for a while and not seeing real progression, we'll get better together. So here we go, the point of this exercise is to show what someone like myself versus someone who just trains for their hobby, when it comes to both doing something that neither have done, how equal it can really be, and how much dedication it takes to get good at these type of things, which from this point is what I intend to do. So here starting with warm ups, 110 kilos, warm ups imperative for getting that mind to muscle working. Nice. Roll your elbows in, there you go. Yeah, it's good. Real nice. So we're focusing on form here and looking at how good our lifts were, incrementing up really slowly to find out where kind of our maximum baseline was. Downside of this is we did a lot of sets. Upside of it was we really got to focus on the movement at minimal risk. Heels, heels, hips through straight away. Nice. Let's fire those hips super early. 
Five, hit, 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 hit. Nice. Good. So from this point, if you take a look at my lifts versus Harris's, you can see that my mechanics are a little bit better. Um, although my grip strength is not great. So here you'll see me switch to an over under on the third rep And you can see how much cleaner it looks and how much smoother and stronger it looked than the previous two When my fingers are beginning to give up the goat and that is an issue. I'm gonna have to work on I'm gonna have to build grip strength Decent Try and drop it from the legs when you get to the top so as the weight begins to creep up, you'll be able to see here, Harris lifts side by side with me. We're doing around about two to three reps on the lighter weights as we build up to doing twos and singulars at our upper level. But here you can see, I am having to correct him on certain things because I've had the luck of hanging around people that are able to teach me how a deadlift should be. So I'm passing that on with Harris. Using over under grip to maximize strength because my grip is not that strong at the moment. And that allows me to concentrate on focusing on developing a stronger rear chain and keeping that back and spine neutral and reducing any hinging. So as we go on, you'll see how we progress. It's a normal human being's wrist. Look at the difference. Look at my wrist. That's ridiculous. <laughs> so you have normal wrist. 12 year old girl wrist. Hips. Nice. That's better. So up to 150 kilos, 330 pounds, and at this point we have to start watching the hips and making sure that they don't fire too early so that we're not hitching and hinging all on that lower back. It's true. So as you said, you know, this is my whole mindset. It's pointless looking good if we can't do these functional movements. So here you can see I'm setting up well. I'm driving through. Hips aren't popping early. Very happy with the way this looks. But again, this isn't heavy yet. So moving up to 160 kilos. So this is going to be our last set where we do it kind of au naturel with no straps, no belt, nothing. I don't have a good belt with this. I've just got a um, like a Velcro strap belt. So it's nothing that's going to be like great for powerlifting, but it will give us a little added stability. Then we'll add some straps in as well. So we take away those limiting factors to see how heavy we can get with those on with good form, obviously. Early hip pop. That's what we're looking for. Earlier than you think. And I shout now, fire them through. Now. Earlier still. One more rep. This is all you get. You only have to do one more. I want you to fire those hips real early. Now! That's it, you don't, nice work. So you can see there I was asking Harris to fire his hips a little earlier and this is a big thing is you can start driving through those hips way sooner than most people think and if you do that, if you concentrate on firing the hips early, that'll stop you just lifting all with that lower back and popping the hips straight up which then creates straight legs which then puts all of that leverage on the lower back which is not what we want. So look, this is by no means a decent lifting belt. But what it's going to do is give us a psychological benefit of give us something to brace against around our midsection. So when we take that deep breath in and we brace our stomach, you'll be able to press against this so it creates that mind-to-muscle connection. So even though it might not be a great strengthening benefit in terms of stability, mentally it should help us. So breathe deep in and brace against it now, you'll feel it right against it. Yeah? Like, uncomfortable now, but when you lift, honestly, it won't feel like it's tight at all. Roll the elbows in, deep breath. I'm gonna fire those hips on command. Hips! Okay. Deep breath. Hips, 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 hips. It's up, that'll do. Dump it. <laughs> the second one over and under. Yeah, stronger. Much stronger. So we switched the uh, grip for Harris from normal to over under. And the reason this is a stronger grip is because it allows you to lock into the bar and stops the bar rolling. The problem with um, normal grip is that sometimes the bar will roll and that makes you lose grip. So as you get heavier, try that over under before applying straps. So a thing to notice here is how the Harris didn't really engage his scapula on that, which didn't help him pull in his um, entire back muscles. And that's gonna be one thing. If you find your back rounding a little bit, make sure that you're engaging the scapula and then driving through with the hips. That's gonna help neutralize it. Also, brace your stomach against your belt. You really wanna blow out your gut and hold it like someone's gonna punch you. That's gonna neutralize the spine. Here, Harris started to lift with just pure kind of athleticism and anger, and we had to bring that down and reduce it. So you can see the difference between lift he just did there compared to the same weight with me, how I'm maintaining that rear chain and keeping it a little bit stricter. <laughs> So as a result of watching that, even though the weight goes up here, you'll see that Harrison, we're applying the straps. Watch this lift compared to the last one. This is a heavier weight, but because he's not worrying about the grip and he's able to focus more on his body posture and chain, this heavy lift actually goes up with better form than the previous weight, which was lighter. 
So obviously, it's we've done a lot of sets and we we're starting to get fatigued. So putting the straps on means changing from over under to over over. And here I overthought the lift and actually wasn't able to connect fully. I wasn't confident. So retrying, I set it up and I concentrated more on just driving and not worrying about the grip. And you can see it went up relatively smoothly. There wasn't any hitching, there wasn't any rounding. So it just goes to show how the mind plays such a big factor. Got a benchmark, so we did four plates, which for some of you boys is a fucking warm up lift. And I like that. I like being bad at stuff. You know why? Because it gives me an opportunity to improve. It's an area that I can make gains from. So I like finding these areas of fault. I like finding these weaknesses. So me, me, and we kick this off properly. Yeah. Okay.